Hey guys, it's Rhiannon and Began. Welcome back to Roman's Christmas. Uh, we are about to start, by, I believe, is the final chapter of the game. Uh, this episode will, of course, be the event and then the pre-trial investigation. And then the last recording will be the, the final trial. At least I believe it's the final trial. And the ending, basically. So, yeah, without further ado from me, let's go ahead and get started. The 27th of December, 1285. Even though I slept all night and just took a nap, I still feel so drowsy. But fortunately, I think my nose is clearing up. Maybe I can smell something now. I got up. My entire body felt sore and stiff all over. I'll just go downstairs anyway. The smell of stewed meat filled the corridor. Probably best not to think about what kind of meat it is. You finally woke up. Seeing me come downstairs, Sarazen picked up a tray and came to me. Look, I'm sorry for suspecting you. I apologize for that. He took the soup bowl from the tray and set it before me. Bon appetit! The stewed meat in the bowl was piled up like a hill, higher than the edges of the bowl. Even the soup looked ready to spill over the edge. If nothing else, Sarazen's apology was straightforward. Well, I'm pretty sure I saw his thumb dip into the soup when he passed it to me. I took a spoon and shoveled some soft, overcooked meat straight into my mouth. Seems that the snow kept the horse meat cold enough to store, which might have explained why it still tasted fresh. It's not exactly good, but it's better than nothing. I'm tempted to take another nap after eating, but there's more important things to do than sleep. Seems that Elegant's job was directly relevant to Vincel's motive for committing the crime. I need to ask her about that and thank her for saving me as well. As for Vincel's true target, who is Vincel's true target? I mean, it was... I'm assuming this guy. Vincel's true target must have been Heron. I should ask her face to face when I have time. Who should I talk to? I sat opposite from Elegant, and her tail seemed to swirl under her robe. So, one quick question. Speak. This job of yours. I see no need to continue. You already knew the truth? I know enough, although it may have more to do with the fact that my client is dead and I will not be paid a single coin. Sorry to hear that. Maybe I can make it up for you. Spare me. I know your pockets are empty. At this point, a nice hot meal will do. I can afford that. Can't believe Vincel was one of the noble brothers. Maybe it was fate or coincidence or just bad luck. But it would be hard to convince others with just his gloves and his lost little finger. Starting from scratch in an unfamiliar city, I must admit that is actually quite impressive. Well, he can certainly distinguish different spices since he was once a noble. I can't believe someone as clever as him killed two innocent people and still missed his target. Not everyone has a talent for the art of murder. So the Friar Vincel mentioned really is Heron? Maybe you should ask him yourself. And... What now? Thank you for believing me. And, but you are welcome. Trust is a two-way path. Thrivey, I guess. I sat by Thrivey, who was still reading his giant book. Do you think Heron is the friar who framed Vincel and his brother? Should be. You already have the answer, right? Eh? Do you think he'll be back to take his revenge? Huh, isn't he dead? Thrivey nodded. Didn't expect you to believe in ghosts. At this point, anything seems possible. Even the impossible. What about Vincel's Nyctalopia? Could you explain it to me? 
Just a conjecture. If he really was night blind, then he must have been a picky eater for a long time. Not eating guts is only a few days. Not eating guts for only a few days won't weaken your eyesight. What exactly was that poison that he drank? Judging from its smell, it was likely apple seed extract and a bit of juice. Which maybe, with maybe some flaxseed as well. How could apples be poisonous? If they are, then why would anyone drink cider? Apples themselves are not, but their seeds are. If you collect enough seeds, you can extract a strong poison from them. I'm doomed. I've chewed a lot of apple seeds. Aren't they too bitter to chew? Too lazy to spit them out. So they're the only ones in the hall right now? Well, there is a lot less people, it's true. Tarzan leaned on the barrel with a half cup of cider in his hand. This was the first time I've seen him drinking. Huh, why'd you uh, come down here? Uh, I didn't expect to be this hazy by the first cup. This expl that explains why he never drinks. Will you still keep this tavern open after everything is over? I don't know. What? No way you're telling me that you quit. Where would I find cider as good as yours? If I can live till the snow stops. I'm pretty sure only a lunatic would pick you as a target. Ah, uh, don't jinx it, man. How long will this snow keep falling? We're running out of water. Thank God we have some clean snow, so that'll help. It snowed all four days. It must have an end. For a while there, I thought you would execute me. What? What are you talking about? How would I ever think of you as a murderer? Um, like the one bad ending I freaking got in one of the trials and you actually executed me? Okay, maybe I did just for a second. I guess that's it, huh? Anzox is busy washing dishes in the kitchen. He's clearly not good at this, yet he's not bad enough to break plates. Anzox? Uh, hold on. He rubbed off some soup in the plate with his soft paw pad, dipped it into the water, and rubbed his claws on his trousers. Thank God I never touched his pants. So what's up? Why are you doing the- Tarzan said he needed a break. He must be utterly exhausted by all these incidents. Makes sense. He's even drinking his own stock, so the pressure must be heavy. Anzox put the bowls and plates aside, grabbed a chunk of meat, and began to cut at it. Can't believe Tarzan trusts you enough to cook in his kitchen. Even Kane wasn't allowed in here most of the time. It's less a matter of trust, and more that I volunteered. He's just tired. Anzox trimmed the fat on the meat, then cut the rest into small pieces and threw them into the stew pot. Do you cook often? I have to say, you look like you knew your way around the kitchen. Never in White Star, but other tavern keepers sometimes ask me to do chores when I can't sing for my supper. Don't expect much, though. As long as you don't serve me something cold or burned, I won't ask for more. If all my dinners have such underwhelming expectations, then I may have found a new calling. Hands aren't shaking anymore. I hope you've fully recovered. I do hope so, though lately I've had quite a few odd dreams. Not that I'm complaining. My dreams are far better than the stories I made up when I'm awake. Does writing down your dreams count as stealing your own work? So, do you think Heron really is the Friar Vincel mentioned? I'm not so sure. But if he is the one who ruined Vincel's life, then I'm gonna smash his head with in with my loot. Hey, that's a little extreme. Guess that's it. He looks like he's going to cook some meat for dinner. Tarzan must be really tired. Never let Exos in the kitchen unless he was desperate. 
So I did the kitchen. I'd better go to the restroom since I drank too much water. When did my reflection in the mirror become this haggard? You golden hairs floated in the sink. I'll do the rest on my own. Is that it? I guess. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Yes, that's it. Those two. I already talked to them. Upstairs. So many rooms. Rather quiet in the corridor. Oh, there's literally nothing to do. Literally just have the map and that's it. I just look in everyone's rooms, I guess? I'll just do something relaxing in my room. What to do? Turn to a random page in my book. On 14th of May, 1280, Helio II inspected the Karnak block in person to learn how the residents live. Karnak block is an underprivileged area in our capital, Rymph. When Helio II arrived, the friars and sisters in the church were giving out food to the residents. Helios II gave high praise for their mercy, kindness, and piety, and had his meal of relief grain with the residents. Helios II inspected the streets through Karnak in the company of the medical officer of Karnak Block. Shit. Piety of the streets comforted Helios II. He felt... Great satisfaction after he learned that after the epidemic of dysentery, cases of the wretch disease had been zero for three consecutive months. This is not the Karnak I knew. Oh, that's it? But I'll just try again. No such thing as too much sleeping when you catch cold. Snowflakes fall from the sky, covering my hat and shoulders. There is no need to stop and shake them off since I was only a few steps away from the door. Walking to the White Star, I put my overcoat on the head stand and sat by the counter. Giannis and Kane were chattering and laughing. They stopped for a second to wave to me and continued the topic of whether Apollyon could stand a chance against Draconia in a war. Garzen shrugged behind the counter and put a cup of cider in front of me. The door was pushed open as Peter carried a bag of carrots and came in, shaking the snow off his body. Tarzan opened the counter door and took the bag. Then he pulled out a handful of state and stuffed the coins into Peter's. I miss him so much. I can't smell Sean's scent here anymore. Aaron is ne was kneeling by the window with a cross, muttering something fervently. Our father, I was informed in evil, and in sin did my mother give me birth. I confess my sins on my hands, feet, tongue, eyes, and thoughts to you and your angels. May your punishment... I'd better wait for him. Flog my hands so that I may give salvation to those in need. Flog my feet so that I may walk on the thorny road to preach your gospel. Well, he has a lot to say. Flog my tongue so that I may cherish every time I sing your praises. He's still there. I'm starting to wonder if this will last until next Christmas. Touch my eyes so that I may pity the unbeliever of your glory. He's still going? Whisper to my mind so that I may be washed by your truth. May your grace lead me safely to shore. This is taking forever. Probably best to interrupt him. Is that really it? Our 
Our Father, grant mercy upon my soul, for my body is sinned. Our Father, give you mercy on my soul, because the sin has been made manifest. May Almighty you forgive my sins in. Sorry for bothering you. Uh, Detective, I didn't see you there. Sorry. Aaron turned his head toward me. The fur at the corner of his eyes was streaked down onto his cheeks. My sins are unforgivable. I guess he really is penitent. But I have paid for my crimes. Aid? Did someone smash your head in with a loot? I have resolved to pray more devoutly in order to make good the sins of my youth to God. What about your sins towards the others? God will ease their misfortune and solve their wounds. That's not what you said when you exchanged rooms with Peter. This is different. I can do good works within the teachings of God, but I see now that I don't have the power to carry out his ineffable plan. So what are you going to do then? Keep praying and hope a miracle happens? I will keep praying, and when it is time, God will grant me a revelation. Which is a fine way of saying, do nothing useful. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He doesn't have anything more to say. Peter is gone. The smell of blood won't fade for a while. I better get out. They still kept his body in there? I think most the other ones, they, like, removed the bodies. I can't even smell any traces of Cain in this room. It's only been three days. Okay, I'll do the attic in a second. I just gotta go in Fuller's room. What do you plan to do after the snowstorm? Turn home early so I can confess. Are you planning on traveling to Cordova overnight? Well, you're doing the right thing. I was afraid that you were planning to run away, but now it just seems that I'm being paranoid. Huh? Cause a lot of trouble for the rest of us if you did. Why, why would I? What if Heron truly is a friar whom Vincel mentioned? Wouldn't be. Surely someone is devout. As him wouldn't be mixed up in such business. Because you haven't seen how he gets when he's drunk. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to doubt you, but the way the scene was set up deceived me. That's not your fault. Honestly, there was a moment even I suspected myself. I won't doubt others that easily anymore. That might be overdoing it. Never hurts to be cautious. Guess that's it for her. No one's in the attic. That's it, I guess. Go back downstairs. The light died down outside the window and flames danced on the pine logs in the fireplace. The smell of the stewed meat from the kitchen is making me feel hungry. Anzox's cooking skills are better than I thought. But I haven't got enough clues yet. Wait, well, actually, let me see. Anzox's cooking skills are better than I thought. Let me just make sure they don't say anything different. Okay, no. I guess, yeah, I guess there's nothing different here. I sat at the table next to the fireplace. Bon appetit! Anzox put the bowl on the table with his loot in another hand. Why are you still holding your loot? Would you care for some music during dinner? I think I'll pass. Anzox's stool is actually not bad. Even Sarzen came out of the cellar and ate some. Then again, he could just be too drunk to care. Dinner just peacefully passed as Sarzen began to sober up. Ugh, I didn't expect my Sire Eater to be so strong. Just a single cup almost knocked me over. I think it's all about your tolerance level. That's why I never saw you drink. You're a lightweight. I'm not! And here I thought a mighty specimen could handle a teensy bit of cider. One more word out of you and I'll start charging you for your bed. Please don't have mercy! <laughs> Wait, how do you test the quality if you don't drink it? That's what you guys are for! Huh? Oh. 
So every winter you give us free cider. You're doing experiments on us? I get some knowledgeable drunkards to my cider, and you get free cider. It's a win-win. So do we still have need a watchman tonight, or should we just... I'd better not mention it since I'm the one who fell asleep during my watch. I'll do it. Heron, who had kept silent the whole meal, suddenly interrupted me. I'm going to prove that no matter what I was before, I've changed. That I now walk the right path under the guidance of God. But... Maybe the paranoia talking, but I couldn't help but consider the possibility that Heron might slaughter us while all when we slept. Anzox twitched. Seems like I wasn't the only person thinking that. Thank you. I know it's not exactly easy. I was intending to be the watchman, but I'm afraid at this point I'd fall asleep. I thought Sarsen just glanced at me. Thanks. I hope you all can trust me. For although I was tempted by the devil a long time ago, I have rid myself of my sin with God's guidance. Oops! Gravy got up in a hurry and rescued his book from his spilt cider. The overturned cup rolled in a smooth arc across the table, causing cider to drop down the edge of the table. Blast it all! Sorry for interrupting. I have to deal with this. Gravy quickly ran upstairs with a cup of water. He even tried to take the steps two or three at a time, but stumbled instead. Such a precious manuscript. It seems the good doctor is rather unlucky. More than just him, it seems. Everyone in this tavern incurred bad luck these days. Yeah. Tarzan hung his head and rested his, rested his elbows on the table, his claws on his snout. Snowfall seems lighter now, maybe by morning. Don't say it! Such things won't come true if you speak them aloud. Uh, alright. I didn't expect Solara to believe that kind of stuff. I had a secret friend once. She taught me many things like this. Secret friend? It was in my childhood. Once a month, father used to give me a basket of flowers, which he had collected from his garden and sent me to sell them at the market. Once I was selling pomegranate flowers to an alchemist who sold love potions at the fair. She bought a handful of flowers and passed them to her daughter. That's how we met each other. Since then, I went to find her every fair day. And in those days... I would show her what I learned in my etiquette lessons, and she would teach me things. How to make some simple potions, how to avoid bad luck, and the creation of charms. You know, Cain would have gotten along well with Solar if only he'd become their cook. Then? Then I heard her mother was burnt as a witch, and so was she. Tarzan's head had slid from its spot, and he began snoring softly. Oh dear. Seems even he has his limits. Ellen got up and walked past Sars and she paused and gently touched his shoulder, but continued on without waking him. Without waking him. I think I'll go back to my room and get some sleep. Good night, everyone. Are you following me? Is there something you want to talk about in private? Well, I just wanted to get your opinion before I went to bed. Will it happen again among the rest of us? According to what information I have collected, the rest of the lodgers were total strangers before they came here. Tarzan and Anzox knew each other a long time ago, but they never had problems before. So there should be no further problems, so maybe you should be careful. What? No such thing as too much caution if you have dirt on someone. If, you've ta if you're talking about Solar, I've spoken to her. There shouldn't be any problems with her. Not just her. Do you mean? Elegant glanced at the staircase and rose up on her toes and whispered in my ear. Hold on, not that one. I'm half deaf, remember? Sorry, my mistake. I turned around and listened to her whisper with the other ear. Aaron. Seriously? He swore he'd repented. Just as, I believe, Lunik swore sh he would be faithful to Solar at their wedding. And all those who offer to keep vigil at night the these days tend to, well, no offense. Good point. Well then, I wish you good night, Roman. Good night, Elegant. I locked the door and bolted the window. Like Elegant said, no such thing as too much caution. Maybe tonight I can sleep peacefully. I couldn't be more familiar with the taste of snow. A salty taste like rusted iron, cruelly overwhelming all other tastes. From the first snow of winter to the last one in spring, I won't miss any of them. Oh, you think you're tough? Come on, get up. Is this all you got? 
Did you break your leg or something? Move, you idiot. Oh shit, it's really broken. Stop standing there like an idiot. Run. But what about him? Are we going to... Are we just going to leave him there? Here? Don't have time. Just go. That day, there was a heavy snow as well. That day, he was there as well. Day 6, 28th December, 1285. I was awoken by a loud, heavy pounding on my door. Ah. Roman! What a uh, huh. Tarzan grabbed my wrist as I opened the door and dragged me downstairs without a word. Hold, hold, hold on, what happened? Oh god, he's dead, isn't he? Yep, Heron's dead. The lobby was filled with the scent of booze, and a dozen or so empty cups were piled up on the counter. Heron was bent over the counter with half a cup of cider in his hand. He drunk? Just as I was about to condemn Heron for drowning himself in cider and abandoning his duty, a familiar smell, just barely mistake masked by the alcohol, caught my attention. Blood. Heron's pupils were empty and enormously dilated. The silver cross was stained with purple red with dark red spots. The back of Heron's head was black. Not from black colored fur, but dark congealed blood. The smell of blood and cider filled the air of the hall, like it was trying to seep into the carpet and the bricks of the halls, of the walls. Heron. It had to happen eventually. Eventually? He escaped from Vincel twice, but I guess the third time's the charm. Don't blame this on a ghost. Look at how many people are still left in my tavern. Only six, and one of those six only lives because we can't touch her. No matter who the murderer is, I can't. I can't take this anymore. But stop investigating. I am so, so tired of people dying. Besides, Heron wasn't exactly innocent. I can't just... I'll go ahead and save it, but I can't just... Not continue. We have to find the culprit, at least. I know Heron did something unforgivable, but it doesn't matter what his past sins were. Execution without a judgment is not allowed. That's why I want to keep investigating, but I'll respect whatever you decide, certainly. I'll go find Thrivey to do the autopsy. Thank you. Tarzan passed me the keys and hurried upstairs. Okay, now we're doing the search part. All right. Tarzan didn't even like the fire in the kitchen. Several empty mugs piled on the counter. Menu of the White Star. Aaron's body is leaned over the counter, staring into the distance with a vacant expression. I better not do anything before Thrivey has a chance to examine it. Not that I can't do any examination myself, but it's better to have a professional's physician do it instead. Okay, same thing. Alright. Okay, so it's just the three spots, okay. Handle, nothing special. Wind spiral stairs. I think there's really much out here. Wind cup. Yeah, I don't think there's gonna be much in this part here. Flames in the fireplace have died down. Faces in the fireplace. Handle, nothing special. Wooden cup. Nothing real. What's 
What's taking Thrivey so long to come downstairs? Sorry for making you wait for so long. We just got ready. It's okay. I'll go take a look elsewhere. Thrivey rubbed his eyes with his sleeve and covered up his mouth to hide his yawn. Sorry for waking you up this early. It's okay. This is my job. Okay, this is... I've seen this before. What do you think happened last night? It may sound strange if I say it aloud, but I think that Heron was killed by Vincel's ghost. How is that possible? An old friend of mine told me that if someone died with strong resentment, they would linger in this world as a spirit until they get what they want. Let's make something clear. Usually we don't take ghosts into consideration if we still have living people as suspects. Okay. I lost one shirt. At least I didn't lose my life. I could probably collect all my hairs in my bed and make a brush from it. The imprint of my head on the pillow is still there. Nothing's wrong with the window. I know back in the evidence collected in my last case are in my drawer. Oh, yay. Case note added a clue. Yeah. Put the arrow back in the evidence bag. Yeah, the case note that I could totally read. Developers. You need Developers, you need to have your case notes translated, too. Door swung open before I inserted the key into the keyhole. Weird. And also, that's not how you spell weird. What's going on? Do you usually lock a door after investigating a room? Of course, why? The door to the room Vincel stayed in was open this morning. Perhaps somebody opened his door in order to convince us that his ghost took his revenge. Hmm. Last night, wait, why am I bothering to ask? I went upstairs with you, then I went back to my room and slept. The window must have been open for a long time since there's so much snow on the sill. It seems to have been open the whole night. Is this Vincel's room or is this her room? Vincel's giant- okay, this is Vincel's room, I think. Vincel's giant chest samples of spices are still laying around. In Cell's bed, though he'll no longer enjoy it. Hello. Door is still empty. Elegant should have checked this. No piled up on the windowsill. Was this also set up to confuse us? An attic, I guess. Oh dang, they're both up here, okay. Anzox had his loot on his knees and was wiping it with a cloth. Suddenly I noticed that some of the varnish was missing from the back of his loot. Anzox? What? What happened to the back of your loot? It's just a little dinged up. Did it hit something? I must have accidentally scratched it on the banister. He turned the loot towards him to hide the damage. Suddenly, a tiny glass bottle dropped out of the loot's sound hole and onto his thigh. Anzox covered the bottle with his paw and tried to slip it back into the sound hole. What is that? What's what? Don't pretend. You know I saw it. Fine. Anzox lifted the loot by the neck and shook it until the bottle fell into his palm. It looked like it was half full of a dark liquid. It's just some belladonna juice I got a long time ago. I take a few drops when I need some inspiration. 
So like drugs. <laughs> okay, that's uh Back to Starzen. So what were you going to do with the white star after all this? What am I supposed to do? Keep running it, of course. After all this, don't you think customers might think, who knows? Not like I'm a god or something. All I can and should do is keep this tavern running. Sure, the atmosphere might never be the same, but it's better than just closing up shop for good. What did you do last night? When I went upstairs last night, there were still a few people in the hall. I checked every door to make sure they were all locked. Then I went up to the attic to sleep. In Sal's room too? Certainly. Who was still in the hall when you went upstairs? Let me think. Heron, of course. He was on night watch. And? Anzox was playing his loot by the fireplace then. I guess he was worried that he might become unfamiliar with his loot due to the coma. Galar too. She didn't want to go back to her room yet, so she stayed in the hall to listen to Anzox's music. That's all. Ivy's weird book with a fuzzy image of a dragon and weird symbols which I can barely understand on its cover. It's almost dry after being soaked in cider last night. Ivy's medicine chest, impressively cumbersome. I open the chest. There's a lot of drugs in it. Laxatives, antidiarrheals, sleeping pills. Ivy's bed. It was one of Sarzen's beds. Something heavy was here and left a remarkable impression. Anzox's bed. He sleeps here almost every time he comes to the White Star. Something heavy was here and left a remarkable impression. Okay. Candle. It could be a weapon with a candlestick, maybe. Ladder. Dragged by rope. Can move along rails. I'll joke in the attic. Looting stuff like ropes and angel wings used for an April Fool's costume. Okay. And Tarzan's key holder. He keeps the keys to empty rooms here. But only Sarzan has the cellar key and it's not on the keychain. I checked the keys. They belong to Kane, Sean, Peter, Vincel, and Giannis. The round skylight in the attic roof. I can see light coming through it. No piled up on the skylight. Sarzan's bed. There were two of them. Sarzan split one to Thrivey. Alright. Guess I'll go... Down. Did you finish the autopsy? All is ready. You can go investigate. Well, what about your book? Is it still readable? Oh, it's fine. It's almost dry now. What do you think happened? Well, if you'd like me to guess, hmm... Murderer poisoned Heron. Struck him in the back of the head when he tried to call for help. Okay, my guess right now... Is either... Thrivey... Or Solar, even though I don't think Solar really had a motive. Or it could be Anzox. Right now, Thrivey's my prime suspect. Please wait a second, I'm still examining here. Then I'll go check elsewhere. Oh wait, I finished! Huh? That's faster than I thought. Well, it seems to be pretty simple this time. Okay, now I can fucking look at him. There's blood on the back of his head. I looked close and it wasn't caused by a sharp weapon. He bled a lot, though it wasn't fatal. Like Anzox. Heron's pupils are dilated. Fakes looks purple from suffocation. There's blood on the back of his head. I looked close and it wasn't caused by- okay.
Logan Heron's hand is half full. Uh, better not touch that. Why? I think that cider is poisoned, though I'm not positive. That's just my assumption after examining the body. I have prepared an autopsy report for you. Ask if you don't understand. Thanks. Menu of the White Star. Okay, I guess it's only the body now. Okay. Oh, well. I should investigate the hall, but maybe there's something on the second floor, too. Though not everyone can give useful testimonies, asking everyone is still necessary. I want to check the autopsy report again. All right. Heron, male hyena, around 30 years old, body discovered half an hour ago, dead for about eight hours. The body was found bent over the counter with a cup in his hand. Rigor mortis has set in. A wound caused by blunt force trauma was located on the back of the skull, with obvious but not excessive bleeding. There is bruising on the face as well. Body's pupils are extremely dilated, and he shows signs of anoxia. The symptoms suggest that he was poisoned with belladonna. That is all I found. Poison with belladonna? Collect 42 belladonna berries during full moon, grind them with half an unpeeled lemon, then filter it to make a potion. Very small dosage will call you, was, will, a very small dosage will cause euphoria, but any more will result in death by suffocation. Judging from his symptoms, I think he must have been poisoned. Such a coincidence. What? Ansox owns a bottle of belladonna and the bottle's half full. Mm hmm. Oh, okay, I already did that. Uh, oh yeah. Then I guess. I took a deep breath through my nostrils, trying to sniff out the murderer. Although it doesn't work all the time, it saves me a lot of trouble. Scent of blood is too strong. I can't connect the scents with these people. Might as well pay more attention to the scents. Time to sniff. I closed my eyes and breathed in and out slowly. If I close my eyes and sniff carefully, I can locate the position of every odor, then restore them to the scene. The more similar interaction methods, places, and times are, the more similar the scent is. Heron smells just like the surroundings. He has he wasn't moved by the others. Mugs smell like s mugs smell like cider and heron. Menu smells like blood and paper. Apart from heron and sarzens, no one else's scent can be detected. I don't smell anyone. Something is off. It's normal if blood is spilt on that menu. Something is off. Body wasn't moved. No scent of fighting either. Something is off. The mug in Heron's hand should be the poisoned one. But it smells just like the other mugs. The truth is not always welcome. It's time to find out what happened. Did he kill himself? I'm thinking that's what happened here. Because it kind of reminds me of a case that I watched in the game Danganronpa that happened to another character. And not only that, but that character also had wounds in the back of their head, too. So I think he might have done it to himself. So truth is not always welcome. It's time to find out what happened. Oh, is it trial time? Might be trial time. Okay, this is trial time, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. And in the next episode, we will continue with Roman's Christmas.
and we will be finishing i believe is the final trial and the end of the story so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i will see you guys in what i believe will be the finale have a good day guys